Hello friends, in this video let us discuss previous year electronic science paper which was conducted by UGC NET in the year 2018. Paper consisted of 100 questions. In this video let us discuss question number 1 to question number 25. Moving on to question number 1, what they are given is consider the logic circuit that is shown in the figure below. The function F1 and F2 and if they have given in terms of canonical SOP, they are asking what is the value of F3. We know that F1, what they have given is 8, 9, 10. What is the value of F2 means? It is 7, 8, 12, 13, 14 and 15. But what is the value of output? They are telling it is 8, 9. The output of an AND gate is when the inputs are common, the corresponding element will be the output of an AND gate. So, 8 is common. So, 8 is the output. 9, 10 is not common. Similarly, 7, 12, 13, 14, 15 is also not common. So, the output of an AND gate is 8. Now, what should be the value of F3? We know that in the case of OR gate, if one of the input is high, then output of OR gate will be high. Nothing but here, you should get 9. If you are going with the 9 comma 10, that is first option. If I am writing 9 comma 10, then the output will become 8, 9, 10. That is nothing but violation of output. So, the corresponding option that is going to follow is option B is correct. Nothing but F3 should be given only 9. Second question, an exact position of Fermi level in the case of n-type semiconductor they are asking. We know that we will be having valence band over here and conduction band over here. At absolute 0 Kelvin, your intrinsic level and Fermi level will be in the middle of the conduction band and valence band. But in the case of n-type semiconductor, if I am taking, it is close to conduction band. But if I am considering the p-type semiconductor, then your Fermi level will be close to valence band. They are asking with respect to n-type. So, the formula is Fermi level that is EF which is equals to EC minus KT into ln of NC divided by ND nothing but option A is going to follow where NC is effective density of states in conduction band K is the Boltzmann constant T is absolute temperature and ND is concentration of donor atoms so these things you have to remember. Third question match the following what they are asking is on the list one they have given current gain in common base configuration that is they are talking with respect to alpha input impedance in common base configuration voltage gain in common collector configuration or emitter follower output impedance in the case of common base configuration we know that alpha will be less than 1 because alpha how can I express is alpha equals to IC divided by IE we know that emitter current IE equals to IB plus IC nothing but IC is less than IE so you will be getting alpha less than 1. Input impedance in the case of common base configuration is the lowest one. Voltage gain in common collector configuration is unity. Output impedance in common base configuration is very high of the order of 2 mega ohms. Let us talk about common base configuration common emitter configuration and common collector configuration with respect to input impedance and output impedance. With respect to input impedance, common base configuration it is a low value and in the case of common emitter configuration it is a medium value or a moderate value. In the case of common collector configuration it is a high value. If I am talking output impedance in the case of common base configuration it is high and common emitter configuration it is moderate or medium value. And common collector configuration it is a low value so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option D is going to follow. Moving on to fourth question in an NPN transistor operating in saturation mode the output voltage VCE is given by we know that we will be having a collector voltage and we will be having a base voltage if collector voltage is greater than base voltage then we will be telling the transistor is operating in linear mode or active region. If collector voltage is less than base voltage then we will be telling the transistor is operating in saturation region. So in this case the thumb rule what it says is collector to emitter voltage we will be taking 0.2 volts which is less than VBE. 
which is less than VBA because we will be taking VBA value which is ranging from 0.6 to 0.7 volts. Some of the textbooks they will be taking 0.65 volts also. So the suitable all option that is going to follow is option C is correct. Fifth question, rotate accumulator left with carry flag is an example for not an immediate addressing mode, not register indirect addressing mode, not register addressing mode, it is implied addressing mode or implicit addressing mode. So the suitable option that is going to follow is option B is correct. Moving on to sixth question, which of the following function implements the corn of map that is shown below where x denotes don't care condition. So we can go for SOP grouping or we can go for POS grouping because option A and C they have expressed in terms of SOP, option B and D they have expressed in terms of POS. So let me solve using SOP representation. So if I am making this one as a nibble, what I will be getting is the corresponding value is AB and I can go for another nibble grouping or quad grouping. So, so what is the value you will be getting is B and on the row wise I will be getting C nothing but it is B times of A plus C. None of the options are getting matched. So let me go for POS grouping. So if I am going for POS grouping I can make a octet. So the corresponding value is B into so I can go for nibble. So what is this value is a plus c. So it is b times of a plus c. This equation I got by taking SOP. This equation I got by taking POS. We know that SOP is functionally equivalent to POS. So none of the options is getting matched. It should have been b times of c plus a. At that time I would have told option b is going to follow. Anyway, this question is a grace question because none of the options is getting matched. Moving on to seventh question for equation of continuity in which of the following is true for steady state currents they are telling. It is very very important. They have given steady state currents. We know that curl H equals to J and with respect to modified Ampere's law it is curl H equals to J plus dou D divided by dou T. So if I am taking del on both sides what I am getting is del of curl h which is equals to del dot j. What is del of curl which is equals to 0 that is del dot j. But with respect to modified Ampere's law if I am solving it is del of curl h which is equals to del dot j plus del dot of dou d divided by dou t. What is this value? This value is 0 which is equals to del dot j plus del of dou d divided by dou t. We will be getting del dot j which is equals to minus dou rho v divided by dou t which is not equals to 0 but under steady state this value will be tending to 0. So with the help of Maxwell's equation nothing but Ampere's law and modified Ampere's law I will be getting del dot j which is equals to 0 nothing but option A is going to follow. Moving on to 8th question what is the output of the following statement? So this statement how can I write means if x is greater than 5 assign y equals to 3 else assign y equals to 4. In a single line I can make use of a ternary operator like this. If x is greater than 5 then assign y equals to 3. So the statement will store 3 in y if x is greater than 5 true otherwise it will be storing 4 in y. So the corresponding option that is going to follow is option A is correct. Moving on to ninth question, they have given a piece of code. So they have executing the output statement three times printf, printf, printf. Where you are represented the slash n, nothing but a new line character or slash t, nothing but tab space is very, very important. Before percentage d, they have given slash n. Next set of outputs, should be executed in a new line percentage d i what is the value of i it is 1 next time again you are executing percentage d i nothing but what is the value of i it is 1 so it is 1 so you will be executing 1 1 1 nothing but option c is going to follow say suppose you have written percentage d slash n percentage d slash n 
at that time your output would have been like this 111 say suppose you have written percentage slash n over here then you would have got the output which is something like this right so these things are very very important where you are placing this slash and nothing but a new line character or task space or carriage written these things are very very important moving on to 10th question what you have to find is average output voltage in the case of full wave rectifier so we know that average voltage that is v average which is equal to two times of vm divided by pi in the case of full wave rectifier and bridge wave rectifier in the case of half wave rectifier it is just vm divided by pi this is with respect to half wave rectifier so what is the value of vm the value of vm they have specified as 15 volts this is vm or peak voltage also so 2 times of 15 divided by pi value is 3.1415 which is equals to 9.545 volts nothing but approximately equals to it is 9.55 volts statement 2 is correct so i need to offer option b nothing but statement 2 is correct statement 4 is wrong so the suitable option that is going to follow is option b moving on to 11th question what they have given is x of t which is equals to e power minus t and y of t which is equals to e power minus 3 what they are doing in time domain means they are performing convolution of x of t and y of t if you are doing convolution in time domain which is equals to multiplication in frequency domain that is you will be getting x of s into y of s so what is the value of x of s it is 1 divided by s plus 1 what is the value of y of s it is 1 divided by s plus 3 which is equals to a divided by s plus 1 plus b divided by s plus 3 let me make use of partial fraction so at that time what you will be getting is the value of a which is equals to half you will be getting and b you will be getting minus 1 by 2 so on simplifying what i will be getting is a a means it is 1 divided by 2 into s plus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 into s plus 3 if I am taking inverse Laplace transform, what I will be getting is 2 is common. It is e power minus t minus e power minus 3t times of u of t. Nothing but option D is going to follow. Twelfth question. In a circuit that is shown below, the voltage at drain terminal is. Now, they are considering this current as high. I will be making an assumption that MOSFETs Q1 and Q2 are similar. If it is similar, then the same current will be flowing through this MOSFETs also by assuming the resistors RD1 and RD2 as same. So, net current that is flowing over here is high. So, here the current should be I divided by 2 and here also the current should be I divided by 2. We know that in the case of MOSFETs, gate current is 0. So, you will be getting source current which is equals to drain current. So, this current value is I by 2 and this current value is i by 2 so what is the drop across this resistor is you will be getting i by 2 times of rd you will be getting i by 2 times of rd so what is the drop across vd1 and vd2 means it is vdd minus i times of rd divided by 2 so the corresponding option that is going to follow is 1 is correct and 4 is wrong 13th question in which of the below mentioned logic families the transistors will be operating in cutoff and active region it will not be getting into saturation region that is short key ttl and emitter coupled logic we know that emitter coupled logic is the fastest logic and in the case of short key ttl you will be having a metal semiconductor junction because of this the transistors will not be getting into saturation region and storage time will be a very much less value so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option d is correct nothing but 2 and 4 is correct 14th question which of the following circuits are correct with the reference to that of inverter what do you mean by inverter means if you are giving logic 0 you should get logic 1 but if you are giving logic 1 you should get logic 0 nothing but if you are giving approximately 0 volts you should get vcc supply or vdd supply if you are giving VCC or VDD, you should get approximately equals to 0 volts. Starting with first option, so if I am giving VI equals to 0 volts, let me assume at that time this NPN transistor will not be biased. 
so the entire vcc will be appearing across this v not nothing but if i am giving logic 0 i'll be getting logic 1 if i am giving logic 1 over here nothing but if i am applying vcc at the time this transistors will be forward by us there will be a drop of vbe over here so v not will be pulled approximately equals to 0 nothing but if i am giving logic 1 i'll be getting logic 0 so this circuit is correct let me realize with this circuit if i am giving v a equals to 0 if i am giving v a equals to 0 then v not equals to 0 if i am giving v a as a vcc voltage or a maximum voltage i'll be getting v not also vcc so it is not behaving like an inverter this is a cmos inverter circuit no need to explain so this is a static load nmos inverter circuit so the corresponding statements which is correct means figure 1 figure 3 figure 4 is correct nothing but 1 3 4 option c is going to follow 15th question which of the following statements are correct with respect to vestigial sideband modulation we know that in the case of amplitude modulation we will be having fully carrier nothing but basic amplitude modulation and single sideband modulation also you will be having double sideband modulation and the fourth one is vestigial sideband modulation in the case of am we will be making use of carrier power as well as lower sideband as well as upper sideband in the case of dsb you will be making use of both the sideband powers but in the case of ssb you will be making use of only one sideband but in the case of vsb you will be making use of one complete sideband and another part of the things you are going to take nothing but vestige of another sideband you are going to take as compared to ssb the bandwidth of the vestigial sideband becomes larger say suppose if i am taking the bandwidth as w in the case of vestigial sideband it is w plus delta w nothing but few more hertz you are going to consume second statement what they have given is the filter required needs to have a sharp cutoff value it is wrong in the case of SSB, the filter should have sharp cutoff frequency. In the case of VSB, it is not the scenario. Statement 3, what it says is, the transmitted vestige of the undesired sideband compensates the loss of wanted sideband. Yes, vestige sideband is used in TV transmission of the picture and sound signal they are telling. It is, they are telling it is both. It is actually wrong. So, the corresponding option that is going to follow is option C is correct. Which one you are going to make use of AM technique and which one you are going to make use of FM technique? Comment in the comment section. Nothing but in order to transmit picture, you are going for amplitude modulation or frequency modulation or in order to transmit sound, you are going to make use of amplitude modulation or frequency modulation. Comment your answers in the comment section. Moving on to 16th question, again match the following. So, this J and K if you are shorting, it is a toggle flip-flop. Similarly, this one is positive H trigger flip-flop. This one is negative H triggered flip-flop. This one is clocked flip-flop. You are going to give preset and clear. So, the corresponding option that is going to follow is option P is correct. 17th question, in register indirect addressing mode, the offset address of data is in bx and dx in the case of direct addressing mode you're going to make use of source index pointer and destination index pointer but in the case of indirect addressing mode we are going to make use of bx register and dx register nothing but one and four is correct nothing but option a is going to follow 18th question match the following what they are given is concentration of holes in n type semiconductor it is given by ni square divided by nd because we know that according to mass action law np which is equals to ni square where n is you can write it as nd and p you can write it as na concentration of electrons in p type semiconductor which is ni square divided by na and fermi level in n type material it is as i discussed it is ec minus kt ln of nc divided by nd and contact potential it is given by kt by q ln of nd into na divided by ni square this term i can call it as vt also so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option b is correct moving on to 19th question consider the following statements with respect to characteristic polynomial defined as q of s nothing but the transfer function which is s power 4 plus s cube plus s square plus s plus 1 
they are asking for the range of k for stability as well as unstability let us solve with the help of Routh Arvid's criteria so I'll be having s power 4 term s cube term s square s power 1 and s power 0 so first coefficient is 1 s cube coefficient is also 1 s square coefficient is 1 s power 1 coefficient 1 and s power 0 coefficient is k so how we are going to perform means 1 into 1 is 1 minus 1 into 1 is 1 divided by 1 you will be getting 0 so 1 into k is k minus 1 into 0 is 0 so we will be getting k k divided by 1 you will be getting k so you can shift directly if you are having the first element as 0 and if you are not getting row of elements as 0 so you can replace this 0 as epsilon so what is the value of s power 1 it is epsilon into 1 that is epsilon minus 1 times of k is k divided by epsilon and this value is 0 and this value is you will be getting k now what is the value of epsilon now epsilon will be taking a least value nothing but it is going to take zero value so if i am replacing this epsilon as zero i'll be getting zero minus k divided by zero nothing but this value i'll be getting negative this value i'll be getting negative if i am getting a sign change in the first column then the system will be an unstable system when i'll be getting a condition of unstable means whenever k is greater than zero whenever k is greater than zero then the system is unstable system if k is less than or equals to zero then the system will be a stable system so two and four is correct nothing but option d is going to follow in this paper they have asked 20 assertion and reasoning questions so in each and every part i am going to cover five assertion and reasoning questions moving on to 20th question what they have given is it is not possible to increase the overall voltage amplification if you are making use of common collector configuration. We know that gain is approximately equals to 1. Common collector configuration is also called as emitter follower. In this case, the voltage gain will be at max it will be 1. So this statement is correct. What the reason they are telling is the voltage gain of the common collector configuration is less than unity. This statement is also correct and reason is giving the proper explanation for assertion so i need to opt for option a nothing but both assertion and reasoning are true and reason is the correct explanation for assertion moving on to 21st question a multiplexer is a device which selects one of the many inputs to a single input based on select lines this statement is a true statement a digital multiplexer is a sequential circuit they are telling it is a combinational circuits so option c is going to follow nothing but assertion is correct and reasoning is false see if i am talking about a combination circuits you will be having adders and subtractors and multiplexers demultiplexers encoders decoders code conversions all this falls under combinational circuits 22nd question what they have given is in microprocessor the control bus and address bus are multiplexed they can be demultiplexed using address latch enable this statement is false in the case of 8086 or 8085 you are going to make use of address latch enable in order to multiplex your address bus as well as data bus what the reason they are specifying is the 8085 microprocessor signal can be classified in various groups namely address bus data bus and control bus and status signal externally initiated signals and acknowledgements power and frequency serial input output signals this statement is true so i need to opt for option d nothing but assertion is false but reason is true moving on to 23rd question a necessary and sufficient condition for a feedback system is to be stable if all the poles of the system transfer function have negative real parts. It is true statement. To obtain a bounded response, the poles of the closed loop system must be on the left off of S plane. Even this statement is also correct. Now look at over here. This is the S plane. I am going to plot with respect to sigma and j omega axis. If all the poles are in the left off of S plane, then the system is a stable system. Nothing but you will be getting a curve which is over damped, critical damped or 
under damped response but you will not be getting undamped response if you are having a simple pole over here or you will be having a pole on imaginary axis then the response will be something like this nothing but it will be an oscillatory if you are having at least one pole on right of a face plane then you will be getting a response which is an unstable response so this unstable response is also referred as unbounded response both assertion and reasoning is correct and reason is giving the proper explanation for assertion so i need to opt for 24th question the inductor behaves as a short circuit at s equals to 0 and an open circuit at s equals to infinity this is correct the driving point impedance of an inductor as a 0 at s equals to 0 and s equals to infinity even this statement is also correct and reason is giving the proper explanation for assertion i need to opt for option a now if you are having an inductor in the case of laplace transform how i am going to replace is s times of l if i am having a capacitor i am going to replace by 1 divided by s times of c the corresponding option that is going to follow is option a is correct 25th question in the minimum mode 8086 microprocessor you will be having two modes one is minimum mode and the second one is maximum mode in the case of minimum mode 8086 microprocessor will be doing all the jobs with the help of only an uh, inbuilt processor that is 8086 in the case of maximum mode if you want to perform any mathematical operations 8086 processor will be making use of 8087 that is coprocessors it is going to take the help so what the first statement they are telling is all control signals are given by microprocessor chip itself true the remaining components in the system are latches trans receivers clock generator memory and io devices it's a true it has more than one microprocessor it is false when it is under maximum mode it will be having coprocessors also or it is going to take the help of coprocessors dma etc what the fourth statement they are telling is facilities are provided for implementing allocation of global variables so this statement is actually wrong so statement one and two is correct so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option c is correct in this video i have discussed 25 questions uh, remaining questions i'll be talking in next part of my video if you have followed the lecture please give it a big thumbs up also share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel craving gyan all the best for your exams thank you